Hey, I'm Kev K. I'm a Sakai. Welcome back to MotoGP 17 and the Rider careers. Patrick McDonald is on the edge of grabbing the MotoGP title in his rookie season. Can he do it in Malaysia? As here is the man of the moment. Patrick McDonald in Malaysia and the Sipang International Circuit going for his two laps in qualifying one. Try and make it through to qualifying two. I guess it's not going to be this lap as he's already gone wide in the first corner. But five wins in a row. They failed this man on the edge of the MotoGP title. Trying to repeat what Mark Marquez did just over five years ago. Winning in his rookie season in the top class. Only a handful of riders have done that. Such as Kenny Roberts. In the past, Kenny Roberts Sr. back in 1978. I also got Freddie Spencer, I believe. Well, it was Freddie Spencer the previous youngest, wasn't he? Motor GP winner. Before Marquez came along. Patrick McDonald about to make his own history. Not just for him, for Kenya as well. The top class. And this Malaysia circuit, definitely McDonald track. Seem to be very strong here. And he's had such an affinity with this Avintia. As he has shown in the previous four races with it. Still got a hundred percent winning record on this bike. I don't think I see it ending here either. It's all about what Rossi can do in the race. He finishes third or lower. Madonna is champion. But if he finishes in second. Or if he wins. Then the title goes to Valencia. To the final round. To the longer race as well. In the season finale. There's a 57-1 for Madonna's opening effort. Actually not too bad. Uh, he's got riders coming out of the pits as once again he outbreaks himself into the first corner. It takes kind of a second line there. Not really hitting the apex. We're not running wide either through that left. Then through this fast right and uh, just waiting to gun the powers. But she's level with his opening that. And this is when you expect him to be better. He's now got familiar with the track again as he's behind a fellow of it looks like is that hit to Barber in front or is that Lois Baz looks like it's Barber so he goes more down the inside half a tenth up in his previous effort and that was alright in the second right a bit wide had to wait to get onto the power that might be an issue in the race. The latter part is once again he's going with the medium fronts. Hard rears if it remains dry. You didn't see some clouds overhead. You never know with Malaysia what the weather's going to be like. Even if it's sunny here in qualifying, it could be a downpour for the race. He goes through the left and the right. He might get some slipstream from the rider in front. And this back straight is it's now six tenths faster than his previous lap. It's the Mark V, yes. I've never over a bat in front. But let's see what he can do into his final corner. Break very deep. Hit the apex and then get some slipstream for this home straight. I'll just go past the rider instead. As he's going to set a 56 1. He was quick enough with his first effort. He just showed off on the second, did McDonald, with Folgarosa going through in the tech three, just ahead of Petrucci by less than a tenth of a second. You've got Scott Red in Albert Batista, Lois Baz in sixth, with Hector Barber in tenth, and Bradley Smith at the back. So can Patrick McDonald grab another pole in qualifying two? Let's see it goes. Patrick McDonald for his one lap in qualifying two to grab pole. And he hasn't nailed the breaking into his first corner. So there's still some time to be made up as once again he goes deep. But he's not going to make up the time on this lap. But that's better into the left hand. They're kind of using that camber as well to help get the bike in towards the apex. And he's spinning up the rear through the right hander. It's still smoother than his 
Four, fine, two, that. And right at the top of the hill, rear sliding, but again, Camber can help get that back towards the apex. Not into this left, though. It's a very flat corner, can help. Get the bike into that second right. That's not too bad from McDonald. Now the double right. And all spinning up the rear, but I might have saved him. I'm going to change direction mid corner. So this is not a bad effort from McDonald. And if he does a similar to what he did in qualifying one, he would be right up there. If we can go quicker, he'd definitely be right up there. Let's go into the right, drop down slightly. And he dropped down through the left and right here. Into the trickiest corner on the circuit, this turn 14 right hand. We've seen incidents throughout the years into this corner. And that's smooth enough on the power, going onto the back straight. And that's smooth as you would like. And now just one corner to go. You've got to break. It's kind of deceptive breaking for this corner. You've got to break a bit earlier than you sink into the final corner. It's a two apex corner, as you can see, on that first part on the curb and in on the exit. And that is nice and smooth from McDonald. And it's another 56. And that is pole by just less than a second ahead of Marcus and Vinales with Rossi. Lead in the second row ahead of Dovi and Pedrosi. Could be in trouble in going into the first corner. Then you've got Ian Oni, Crutcher, and Lorenzo leading in the third row. And then Zarco, Alicia Spargo, and Nunes Folger in 12. So, Bukan Patrick McDonald grabbed the MotoGP title in the race. So, here we are looking at the grid with Purple Rain at the top. And there's Rossi leading the second row. Looking for about look out for Ian Oni at the start. Normally pretty quick on that Suzuki in and outside the top 12. You've got the Premax alongside Alvaro at Baptista. Pretty good qualifying in 15th and there's Hector Barbie in 20th. That's my dollar reverse at the engine rate for the lights up here. And go out for this five lap race. Got kind of a long run to the first corner. That's a decent start under the sunshine here in Malaysia. And look out for Marcus down the inside. And Vinales. That's all McDonald gets kind of held up by Marcus. That was Dovi, that was Pedroza by, that was Rossi by, does it? Oh, not quite for Valentino, but McDonald down to fifth. Oh, and there goes Rossi now, down the inside for the fast right. So down to sixth, ahead of Crutch though. Behind his main championship rival, Rossi makes a dive down the inside of Pedroza. Great move on the MR rider. McDonald gets Pedroza on the exit. That's Vinales and Marcus battling for the lead. But here we go, the championship contenders, Rossi and McDonald battling. So McDonald gets it slightly onto the curb. And that uh, sort of are back down the inside. Well, we've got a good run going into the double right. On a great exit as well, looking to the outside of Rossi. No room there though. He's got Lorenzo and Crutch though. Back then, and look at McDonald around the outside of Rossi, around the outside of Dovi, not quite as all. Rossi and McDonald touch. Now Rossi down the inside into the right. Not quite as McDonald holds it around the outside, and goes past Dovi as well. He's been a roadblock to his fellow Italian. McDonald is unleashed in three and up into third. You know, he's not getting the best run into the penultimate corner. Hooks up the apex. You're getting smooth enough on the power. Start the wheel wheel slightly. There's Marcus Vinales going side by side into the final corner. They're all trying to join them as they go a bit wide as well. And it's like Marcus kind of outbreaks himself slightly making that move. And Rossi finally passed Dovi 4 4. As we head in the opening lap, Marcus Vinales, McDonald, Rossi, and the Vizioso. The Pedroza, Crutchlow. And Lorenzo just outside the top five. That's look at this battling. And I was trying to make moves everywhere. Mark is looking back and just sees blue behind him. Little old staying back of these two for the time being. As he's ahead of Rossi, that's the main thing. They're going to be sending that championship lead. You know, he's around half a second ahead of Rossi. Look at that move from Vinales into the right hander. 
great move. The young Yamaha rider. We expect these to be battling for many years in MotoGP. Vinales in his early 20s. Marquez just approaching his middle 20s. Feels like he should be near his 30s for Marquez. He's been around for so long. To be fair, same for Vinales. Been around six or seven years now, Grumpy Motorcycle Racing. So we now join the battling pad. Look at that, Marquez finding a gap where there wasn't really one. Into the hairpin. Or maybe just setting him up. Let's look at that, Vinales finding a gap back. Into the right hand, and now here is McDonald. Oh, he's down! Onto the curb. Has to pick his bike up. But down to fifth. Rejoins just ahead of Pedroza. Or not. Here comes Danny down the inside. Great move from the Honda. Let's go down the back straight. But he's giving the slipstream to the Vinci rider. And here goes McDonald out breaking Pedroza into the final corner. As Mark is ahead of Vinales again. He's got Lorenzo ahead of Crutcho for seventh. So McDonald in fifth. As Rossi sets the fastest lap, 59 1. Talk about a marker put down by the veteran. So you've got Dovi in front. Got Vinales ahead of Marcus again. Now he's literally changing positions every corner. Saw so McDonald losing the rear slightly through the fast right. He kept it under control this time. Got Pedroza over half a second behind. McDonald charging up to the rear. With his Roger Catty rider of the Vizios. And looking down the inside into the left. Makes it stick as oh, Danilo Petrucci down on his Premac from ninth. Let's look at that switch back from McDonald. Now <laughs> Dobby through. That's normally the Dobby special, isn't it? That move. They've got Rossi over a second in front of McDonald. But he's charging on his third lap. Halfway through this race. They're coming alive now. Even though he outbreaks himself into the left hand up. That's not exactly the kind of alive we wanted. It's now with his hard rear as well. Should be coming into play for McDonald now. As he stays up. Clear of that curb on the right hand side. And he's really gaining to Rossi. Going into the penultimate corner. Right on the tail of his rival. Got over a second gap behind to Dovi. And now look at this extreme. He's eking off that Yamaha. So he nicks to the outside, but then dives it down the inside. Almost losing the rear, almost losing it, getting the power horn, but he makes it through into third. As he head on to the penultimate lap of the race, McDonald with the fastest lap, 57.5, he is flying. Watch out for Rossi into the first corner. Not quite for Valentino. Or is it? Gets him on the exit. Then McDonald on the exit on her elbow to elbow gets forced wide by Rossi. As he shorts this up to fourth. Tries to get the run towards the right hander. Not close enough for a dive though. As Mark is back ahead of Vinales for the lead. Or behind. Look at this from the championship contender again into the left hander. McDonald makes a move on the Italian. Can he make it stick through the right? Oh, yes, he can. Back up to third. And the battling pair, because they've been doing this since the lights have gone, gone out, have not pulled away from Rossi. So McDonald is right there with them. And again, it's a repeat of the second half all over. As Vinales takes back the lead from Marquez. As he look at the tyre where in the bottom right. Looking very good front and rear. Not even halfway worn on either tyre. This time McDonald doesn't go to the outside curb. Kind of cuts into that left hander a bit early. To avoid going into that curb as he takes the wide line now. Try and set up the exit here. 
to get some more slipstream of Marquez this time. As he's trying to get a move done on Vinales. Is McDonald round the outside though? Can he cut it back down the inside over the curb? Past one. Maybe past two. Is it on to the final out? We've got three riders. We're blanking over them. Oh, and here comes Marcus. Has Scott Redding down on his Premac. Not a good race. For the customer of Ducati team, but maybe for Vintia instead. So McDonald gets into the rear of Marcus. But Vinales still needs a head of Honda. This one gets a super run through the right hander. Is he close enough to make a move? Maybe not, but Marquez on Vinales. Forces his way by Vinales, loses out on the exit. And here comes McDonald round the outside into the left hander. Here comes Vinales down the inside. Not quite for McDonald this time, maybe into the right hand on the exit. Has he got half of that to go? Here goes McDonald looking down the inside of the double right, not quite able to make the move. Maybe on the exit. He's all over Vinales. He's a bee in his bonnet. But he's holding on and taking back the lead for Marcus. Small tries to cut back, tries to go around the outside of Marcus. Never going to work into the right hand, or is it? As he tries it on the exit, he gets past Marcus. He's alongside Vinales. Vinales finally leads as Redding's down again. Premier guy trying to finish last, but now McDonald's compromised himself into the penultimate corner. Runs right. And there's Vinales nicking down the inside, but McDonald holds it around the outside. But now, the MR man's going to get the slipstream heading to the final corner of the race. Three riders could win this. Does it go into the left hander? Donald hit the first apex, got a smooth exit, and he's won it. And with it, has he won the title? What a ride from the Avintia, man. Five from five on this bike. As he wins by less than a second of Vinales. And we've got Dovi in third. Pedrosa fourth. Lorenzo fifth. Quattro sixth. Elisa Spargo in seventh on the Aprilia. In only eighth. Marquez in ninth. What the hell, Rossi in tenth? The Vlores Bass in eleventh. Great job. And the Frenchman ahead of Baptista Addix Rins in 13th with his best result of the season. Sarko in 14th on the Tech 3. What a strange race. With Barbera grabbing the final point. What a race for Vinci. All three riders in the points ahead of Calabrian by less than a tenth of a second. Less than half a second. With Petrucci in 17th and Scott Redding at the back. As it is confirmed, McDonald. Is your new MotoGP champion with a 35 point lead. Head of Mavic Vinal is up to second of Rossi now by two points with just 25 foot to play for in Valencia. What a season with Aprilia, with KTM, which really kick started the season, and then ending with a Vinci. And what a combination they have been with Marquez. In fourth, looks like he's going to get that position. Still, the Yamaha guy's going to be battling like hell. In Valencia for second. Then we've got Dovi in fifth ahead of Pedroza. He's just five points ahead of Crutcho. Then we've got Sarko in eighth, ten points ahead of Lorenzo. He's just nine points ahead of Enoni. We have Espargo up to 11th ahead of the Premat guys now by three points. And then three points separate the Premat guys as well for 12th. Then we've got Volga in 14th, just three points ahead of the always. Baz, what a season of Frenchman is having in 15th. Then Jackman is six points ahead of Alvaro Baptista. We have Alex Swings up to 18th now. We have Hector Barber by a single point. Tito about in 20th of the last of the points scores. So Kale Abraham once again so close to scoring a point for the Czech rider. Now ahead of Sam Lowe's in 21st in the championship. With Bradley Swift, Alan Paul Spargo popping up the Riders' Championship. Well, the constructors stand in. Ducati are ahead of Honda by seven points. Ray Amar are your champions with a prayer. Very safe in fourth, but KTM just nine points ahead of Suzuki. And then in the team's rankings, Factory Yamaha team 140 points ahead of Honda, who are guaranteed second ahead of uh, Vintia, who are guaranteed third ahead of Ducati. Tech three ahead of Pramat now, with level on point heading into the season finale. What about they are having for the second best privateer team 
or satellite team, should I say. And you've got LCR in seventh, dropped off that battle, haven't they? And you've got Suzuki in eighth, 21 points ahead of a pre And then you've got Mark VDS in tenth, Aspar in there with eight points behind Mark VDS. And then the Fatchy KTM team at the back. As yes! Madonna's cemented his place in history and he couldn't be more ecstatic. Hopefully he can find his way back to Valencia along with the clones. There's no doubt there's going to be a, a party or two at Avincia going on. I see got Dovi and Vinali exchanging notes in the background. And there's just one more race to go. Can McDonald make it seven wins in a row and keep up the 100% record with Avincia the longer? Valencia Fernani race. Let's see, it goes McDonald for his two laps in qualifying one to make it through the qualifying two. The champion trying to get right up there in qualifying to make it a bit easier in the race. The longer race, gonna have the hard tyres, probably front and rear. Gonna be interesting to see how the Moto GP bike goes over this distance. We've seen with the Moto 2 bike, we're all finding a good balance. Same on the Moto 3 bike, but Moto GP tyre wear should be a bit more extravagant. Especially on that final lap, you don't know what the tyre wear is going to be on that front and rear. There's already seen in some of these races. Let's go down the back straight, but Madonna always seems to do well around here. Never won in Moto 2, but definitely showed pace and was consistent. He was strong in Moto 3. But again, he's showing another hallmark of all these championship winning seasons. Being strong in the second half of the year and rarely getting beaten, rarely dropping points. Just gets on a winning streak and he's virtually unstoppable. He's won six in a row here the second half of the season. And apart from that poor race in Austria, could talk about more wins in a row. He crossed the line for the first time, 28-8. Not bad. There's all that bump at the first corner, kicking out the rear again. Using all the exit curb. As an Espargo has gone down in the home turf. Fours visit to Spain this season. So the Spanish riders getting plenty of home support throughout the year. You can see McDonald already half it quarter of a second up. Maybe half a second after this sector, if he keeps going. That's almost smooth enough on the powers. You've got the helicopter boat just hovering in the middle of the circuit and it's like, and there you go. There it is. I'm actually half a second. Short this up to third. We need to get smooth run through that left hand and in through the right in case so much speed. Look out for that in the race. Where we make moves into this tight right hander. This is really the only move we can make in this final set. So it's looking at now six tenths up from his previous lap. This is going to be a quick one from McDonald. Goes through that long left hander. Clipping the curb on the outside a bit wide in the final corner. It's moving off the pan. Not quite getting a slip stream off the rider in front. But it's a 27.8. Once again, your champion's just showing off with Petrucci in second, just ahead of Folger by 21 thousandths of a second. Scott Reddy missing out in the Pramac, and then you've got Jack Miller, Alvaro Baptista on home turf on the Aspar in sixth, ahead of Lois Baz with Hector Barber in tenth. So here goes McDonald for his one shot out of hold in qualifying two. It'd be similar to that at that time. No doubt it'd be right up there. He goes to the first corner, goes slightly wide. Got some of the power early enough. And into the right hand. You've got to watch out here, Valencia. You've got so many bumps in braking zones. And then camber changes through corners as well, such as that left hander. Might catch the riders out near the end of the races with the tyre wear. Got to watch out for that, does McDonald. Even though the event is not as bad as the KTM at sliding around or even the Aprea, it's very stable. It's very. It's a very good bike, very good hands in bike. Yeah, just something to keep an eye on in the race. 
Goes down this back straight. Taking a tighter line. Getting short shifts up to third. Then he can pelt it through that left. Then through the right as well. It, that's a nice arc through those corners, but not as good run as his qualifying to that. Looks like he's half a second down at least from that effort. But even then, he'd still be right up there. Those qualifying one laps are to be relieved. He's going to the final corner. This time he hits the apex. A bit squiddy getting the power down though. Runs slightly wide and it's just a 28-7. Which is still good enough to lead the second row ahead of Dovi and Quacho with your usual suspects on the front row of Marquez, Rossi and Vinales grabbing a home pole by less than half a tenth of a second ahead of his teammates. With Petrosi in the third row, Zarco and Lorenzo, then Ian only in the fourth row, Petrucci and Elish Espargo. So for the final time, can Patrick McDonald win and make it seven victories in a row to end his championship season? Uh, so you look at the grid with Vinales and Pod in purple rain right behind him in fourth. You've got Pedro's own favourite leading the third row, being in the fourth. Then in the fifth row, Jonas Folger. Then you've got Bazd in 17th. Hector Barber in 20th. Bradley Smith at the back. So here we are at the start. Madonna revving up the engine, waiting for the lights to appear. And go out for this 15 that race. As he gets a decent start, but he's on the outside in towards the first corner. The left hander. But watch out for riders on the inside. But he slots into fourth. What he does here is Dobby pushes him wide. And here comes Cal Crutchlow on his Honda. You can see Pedroza as well trying to join in. I don't want to sneak spy Crutch though. Just about a bike swift there on the curb. And he gets past back Dobby. So 0-4 out of fourth. And the top four. Top five as they were in the championship. But with Marcus leading. Head of Rossi and Vinales. And so remember, who finishes in front between Rossi and Vinales grabs a runner-up spot in the championship. As Will McDonald wants to go early. He's got hard front and rear tyres. Or does he want to slot, just sit behind this a lot? Just keep up with them. And maybe make a move late in the race in the second half of it as Marcus just got mugged by everyone there. To the right hander. It's my Lord. Having a look at Rossi. Then his main tight rival for most of his year. Know that he's there, but then he runs wide for the left. Now's Marcus back by. As he exit the final corner for the first time. It's Vinales, Rossi, Marcus, McDonald, and I believe Dovi behind. No, it's Crotch showing fifth. That's where, where you go, McDonald. Runs slightly wide in the first corner. And gets a quarter of a second penalty. We'll remember that late in the race. There's, there goes Pedroza up to sit. Head of Crutch, though. There's Marquez up to second head of Rossi. And here's McDonald. There, though. Almost into the back of Rossi. Let's go for the right hand. And McDonald actually did a fast L on that. That 33-4 in the opening up. He slides the bike into the left-hander. Looking aggressive early on, McDonald, but then it's costing some time penalties. There's Dobby back ahead of Pedrosa for fifth. As he goes down the inside of Rossi. For third. And it's like he's got ahead of the Yamaha man. Now into the right hand around the outside of Marquez. Now down the inside of Vinales, McDonald is going to break, make an early break for it. As he leads in Valencia. Maybe it's because of that time penalty, he just wants to get out in front. And then kind of monitor the gap behind. As he leaves the final corner for the second time. McDonald giving loads of slipstream. Vinales by knees. That's a 29-7 first man under the 1 minute 30 mark. As he has Vinales a third of a second behind. But he's back with Marquez now. 
So now McDonald can just judge his pace here in the lead. So I was a virtually untouched in the first couple of laps, looking at the bottom right. So you can just look off these tyres. Now, as I said, just pace himself to the riders behind. Now that he's pushed, he is very much the Pied Piper here. And everyone's got to play to his tune now. He's got a sixth tenth for a second lead over Vinales. Got Marcus in third, Rossi off the podium. So at the moment, Vinales bringing that battle between the Yamaha riders for runner up spot in the championship. Marcus got nothing to play for on that Honda. In fourth, he's very secure at that position in the championship. Of course, wants to win on home turf. Who doesn't? He's also got Vinales nicking the win on home turf as well. Got like half the field on home turf. As he goes on to the fourth lap, that's another fast lap, 29.5. Consistent McDonald is here. He's got a 1.1 second gap ahead of Vinales. He runs slightly wide in the first corners. There goes Marquez up to second on Honda. You have the Yamaha. Just very patient. It's McDonald on the throttle. And now that he's got that second cushion, he can just render it as he used to do on the Yamaha. Just get the whole shot. Get an early lead and then just control your pace there afterwards. He was a master of that Lorenzo on the Yamaha. Not quite the same on the Ducati so far, but you never know. So there you go. McDonald gained a tenth for this lap. Now 1.2 ahead of Marcus. That's in the first half of that where they're pretty close on pace. It seems to be this section. Yeah, McDonald can pull away slightly. He's so quick into these double rights. Even if he is being cautious in this race. Look at 1.8 second gap now. But then he kind of loses half a second in this sector. Because he's not very good at breaking into that final corner. Zinadis back ahead of Marquez. Four seconds. So we have another fight to that 29-4. Been metronomic in the lead. And we're only a third away through the race. He's almost got a two second lead over Vinales. Maybe he doesn't want to manage his pace. He just wants to keep in this rhythm. It's a bit like a basketball player when they get hot. And they go on the scoring streak. They just, just find that rhythm. So they can like score buckets like four or five in a row in a quarter. That's what McDonald's probably experiencing now in the lead of this race. It's in such a good rhythm. So the tyres are now getting worn slightly. He's got a 2.3 second lead over Vinales. He's, he's not helping that Vinales and Marcus are once again locking horns like a hell. Just like in Malaysia. So they're slowing each other up. No doubt keeping Rossi interested in fourth. Goes into the right. We got almost a three second lead for McDonald now. Over the battling pair behind. Goes into the final corner, eases the bike towards the apex. Nice and smooth on the power. As he's going to set another fastest that 29 1. Seems like he's easing his way towards the 28. While well, everyone else is just battling the bean to the 29s. This is how good McDonald is on this Avincia. How in sync they've been. Been incredible in the final third of this season. When he's just battling to keep up with Rossi, Marquez, Vinales. But he definitely overtook them and grabbed that crown from under their noses. With Wien's in, Mazzano, Aragon. 
Mitegi, Fear of Ireland, Malaysia, and could we add Valencia to that list on this bike? We've got virtue of three second lead ahead of Vinales behind. Yeah, just easing the bike into this double right now. The helicopter bike is still stranded in the middle of the circuit. So obviously no one's giving him directions yet. Maybe you figure out in the second half of this race. So they're all just easing the bike into that final corner. A bit rough on the rear end there for once. Getting on the power, has he? Oh, he does a 29 flat almost into the 28. He's just racing against himself, against the clock. It's time trial for McDonald. Well, for everyone else, it's a battle with each other as Mark is back up to second ahead of Vinales on this seventh flat. Get the feeling those two will be battling till the flag. And then Rossi will come from behind and just sneak by them. As the veterans just got more tight at the end. Grab second and grab second in the championship. But they know even until that flag is raved. Not the flags on the right hand side, but the checkered flag at the end of the race. It's the old adage of F1, which my Rorca used to say. F1 is if spelled backwards. Doesn't quite work with MotoGP as it's PG O Tom. That's not quite the same, but you get the sentiment. You know, anything can happen in this race. As you saw in Malaysia, where McDonald just, just set him behind Vinales and Marcus, just made a mistake and then had to battle like a hell to grab that victory and the title. As he doesn't set a fast set, a 29 1. Terrible from McDonald. Going slower than his previous lap after. I think it was five or six consecutive laps of going faster. Actually, the first seven laps, isn't it? Where he's just going faster and faster and faster. Shame he couldn't quite keep that up for the whole race, as that's not a good first sector as well. He's got a 4.2 second gap behind to Vinales. As you are approaching the halfway mark of this Valencia race. You can see the rear end of the bike starting to get a bit leery. But still looking at the tyre wear in the bottom right. It's around further where you worn on front and rear. So tyre wear still looking good but there could be trouble ahead. Especially on that final lap. Because tyre wear does kind of accelerate in the second half of the race. And so we had virtually no tire in the opening lap. On the opening two laps, there was no virtually no tire wear. So all that tire wear is coming in the last six laps. See now it is approaching halfway mark on the front. So the bike might start drifting wide in corners. But as long as McDonald is smooth and the power on the exit the corners. And the speed through the corners, he should be fine as there he goes. 28-7, that's a way to mark the halfway mark of the race. This is 5.2 seconds ahead of Vinales. He's just looking so comfortable, McDonald. It's like he's used to leading on this bike. This weather doesn't look too bad either. Cloudy overhead, but... Sparse clouds, so you can see quite separated. Very much sunny. But track temperature not too hot. Let's go through the left hander. Look at those crowds raving to the right hand side. There are flags. Quite a lot of Rossi flags, don't expect that in Spain. So McDonald getting down to first gear accidentally. Don't want to be doing that. And see, taking the wide line into the double right. Beautiful arc there. Maybe a bit too much speed into the second right. Goes through the kink. He's just so consistent though. Making tiny mistakes, but 
No big ones. Which means he's just able to just pull away from the rest. But it looks like he's going to dip back into the 29s. 29 too. What are you doing, McDonald? Half a second slower. Shocking as... Oh, the helicopter pilot's found the first couple of corners. He's improving. Now if you could actually find where the action is, which is behind McDonald, not... No, with McDonald. Always, ha always could have a camera on the leader, but... Not when he's just comfortable and just... Going it on quite smoothly and... It's on calm waters. Behind, there's a battle row going on behind... With Vinales and Marquez. The home favourites. About to be the best Spanish rider as well. Just realised on home turf. Always a good honour to have. It's often here at Valencia. It's been Lorenzo or Marquez. Joe's has also won round here a couple of times. Including the most recent Grand Prix, so... Yeah, lots of love shared between the three top Spanish riders before Vinales came along. We also got another young gun that could be a possible aim in Alex Rins, who's been very consistent in Moto 3 and Moto 2 without ever winning a title. I think he was third in Moto 3 was his best result. There's a 29-3 or McDonald's slip in in the final third of this race. And then he finished run-up in Moto2. Two Zarco, but... Never won a title as Rins, despite his obvious talent and being a very good rider. Let's see, go through the right hander. Then you've got also quite a few good young Spaniards coming through. Your Savvy Verge. He was a long time on the Tech 3 in Moto 2. You also got your own Mir, Moto 3 champion, Arnold Connect. It's got Martin as well. You've got quite a few good young Spanish riders. So the Spanish juggernaut is not coming into an end anytime soon. We're dominating all levels of motor Grand Prix motorcycle racing for quite a few years. But then there's also quite a few good Italian riders coming through. So much as Franco Morbidelli. Got Ennio Bassinini. Got Bezecchi. Italian teenagers on the Mahindra as well, so yeah, quite a few good Italians, and of course Bagnaia as well in Moto 2. Now, of course, already you've got you know Rossi, you've got Dovi, you've got Petrucci. So in Spain, looking good for the future. Britain not looking too bad. Crutcher, the lead rider at the moment. Finally a MotoGP winner. After many years of being close but not good enough. And he's a fit for your works Honda rider as well on that LCR. Maybe like an upgrade behind the works bikes, but he's got works works machinery under him. We also got Scott Redding who's been up and down in MotoGP. Oh, the finishing run up in Moto 2 to Paul Spargo. Oh, we should have won that Moto 2 title. Kind of chucked it away with silly mistakes near the end of the season. Paul Spargo was so strong as well. And you've got Sam Lowe's back to Moto 2. Looking to win that title. Brain is most strong, of course, in World Superbikes with Chaz Davis, Jonathan Ray, the triple world champion now. That Kaz, Sarkin McDonald, still mid 29, still not doing too badly that time wise. Three laps remaining. And then Chaz Davis on the Ducati as well. Kind of getting shown up slightly by Marco Menandri. At least that's what it looked like in Fear of Ireland in. 
for a lot of the past weekend. So Chaz Davis, his window of winning. I will see about the title. Seems to always be closing now with Kazaki dominating. Now with Melangi back on form as well. Another young rider at Grand Prix level. You know, like he was going to be part of the next wave of very good riders. The Melandri won 250, 125cc titles. If I remember correctly, but he was strong in MotoGP. Finished third in the championship in the mid thousands, but it just fell away when he part of the Gigatti curse, maybe. Well, he used to go there to end their careers. And that unfortunately happened with Melangia at MotoGP level. He built it slightly in World Superbikes and went back to MotoGP with a Priya. Couldn't last half a season. So he's rebuilt his career again at Mo World Superbike level and he seems to be doing that pretty well now. It's down to 29-3 on the third to last lap of this race. So, such good consistency from McDonald has. However, Pittista trying to grab the final point on the Aspar bike. But goes down on home to the veteran. Fortunately, that's been a bit of a symptom of his career, making mistakes. Very good rider on his day, though. But done too many mistakes like that. This is just a lap and a half to go. Patrick McDonald perhaps showing why he and Avenger have been the class of the field in the final third. And why he is a MotoGP champion to had his Red Bull Rookies Cup title, his Moto3 and Moto2 championship. But can he retain this title? He hasn't actually retained the title, has he? So he's moved up. He don't do that at the top level, though. So we'll see. Pedro Ronald returns next season. Maybe not with a Vinci, you never know. Could be looking to finally move up to a proper works bike. Again, because of course he's been with the KTM and Aprilia this season. As he's going to the final lap here, final lap of the season. As he sets a 29-4. As he dropped below a 29-5. Since the second half, since the first lap. Incredible consistency from McDonald. But yeah, we'll see if he comes back. There's the Yamaha, Honda, and Faye appealing. Hasn't ridden a Suzuki yet either. Maybe he'll do what he did this season, just go around all three of those. You never know. It's tyre where you can see tyres hanging on pretty well actually at the end of this race. Around a fifth of the tyre left on front and rear. I was right the front might be worn a bit too much but as you can see rear's caught up. And they're pretty even now. The front has slowed down. You can see rear end starting to slide in this final lap as my Lord tries to push a bit. Wants to show that you can maybe get into the 28s on this final lap. So it's nicely into the fast right. Just one more corner to go after the sweeping straight. A sweeping bend. So there we go. Final corner. But all nice and smooth on the power. And he's going to make it seven in a row. Magnificent from McDonald and Avincio once again. As your champion wins by 8.6 seconds ahead of Mavic Vinal. It's just a fast out by a second as well. As he did do a 29.6 on that final. So he did drop down eventually. Out of the 29.5s or under. Then we've got Marquez in third. He dropped 1.7 seconds behind the Yamaha in the end. Of the back, like the hell in the first half of the race. And he finished over a second head. Of Rossi with Dovi in fifth, just had a crutch show. Joe's the down in seventh, disappointing on home turf. Rizarco in eighth, Renzo Knight, Petrucci ran out of the top ten ahead of Folger, Redding, Alicia Spargo, and Dre Inanoni on the Suzuki. Just ahead of his teammate, Alex Rins, by less than a tenth of a second. Good performance on home turf from Rins. Oh, Lois Baz misses out on the final point, though. No. 
thanks to that battle. Half a second off. But he's ahead of Hector Barbara by less than half a second. You've got Baptista, Jack Miller, Titterat, Brandy Smith, Sam Lowe's, Kelly Abraham, and Paul Spargo at the back. So in the championship, McDonald ends up with 337 points, 40 ahead of Vinales. He's nine points ahead of Rossi with Marquez in fourth, 67 points back and 60 ahead of Andrea De Vizioso, who's 43 ahead of Danny Pedroso, who wins that battle of the sixth by just four points in a Cal Crutch show. With Zarco in 831 points, 11 ahead of Jorge Lorenzo, who's 14 ahead of Andrea Iannone. And then we've got Petrucci up to 11th in the end, level on points for Leash S. Spargo and winning the battle of the Premier Riders by five points ahead of Scott Redden. You've got Jonas Folger in 14th with 51 points, 8 ahead of Loris Baz. And Jack Miller, 6 points ahead of Albert Baptista and his mark VDS machine against the Aspar. And then Alex wins on the Suzuki in 18th with 7 points, 2 points ahead of Hector Barbara. And you've got Tito about the last point scorer in 20 of on his mark VDS machine. And then on the Aspar is Kari Abram in 21st ahead of Sam Lowe's on the Aprilio Cassini. And then the factory KTM guys of Bradley Swift and Paul Sprago get the wooden spoon. Then we can shut to stand in Zitz Yamaha, 47 points ahead of Ducati, 356 against 309. Then Honda, 16 points back in third, with a Priya in fourth, 26 points ahead of KTM. We end up 113.7 ahead of Suzuki. Then in the team's rankings, 148 point difference between the factory Yamaha guys with 585 points and the Honda Fellows. Then you've got Vinter in third, exactly 200 points behind. The factory Yamaha guys with 385 points, 55 ahead of the factory Ducati team. Then Tech 3 win the battle for fifth by three points ahead of Pramac, who end up with 179 points. Then LCR with 163 in seventh, or 50 points ahead of Suzuki, or 21 points ahead of Prio Cassini with 92 points. Then Mark VS round out the top 10 with 31 points, eight ahead of Aspar with the factory KTM effort with no points. Now says your championship top three confirmed. Patrick McDonald, Maverick Vinales and Valentino Rossi. And yes, there is McDonald after a hard season. A victorious season though. And now he's going into partying season for the next few months. Despite there being, you know, a post-race test. I don't think we'll see him or the clones for that from Avintia. As you have in Nile said, Marcus. In the background, exchanging notes for the final time that season. But now we're heading to a new season. As what? Who are we going to race with? Sign up for watching and find out next time. I'll see you then.